Today we're going to do a lot of graphing, so that's why we're going to see a bunch of Desmos. But I'm still following on, following along in, along in the book. Man, I can't speak this morning. Following along in the book. Uh, and so here's this blue box, exponential functions, and it's a review of what we've talked about previously. So we call exponential functions can be represented by the equations of the form y equals c times a to the x, where a is greater than 0 and a cannot equal 1. I, exp I explained that briefly, but I did not show you, so we'll show you that here after we finish reading this blue box, where c is the initial value, right, our starting amount, our initial value, and a is the base of our power, and that a is also called the growth factor or the decay factor, depending on whether it's exponential growth or exponential decay. Uh, mathematically, that means if it's exponential growth, a is greater than 1, and if it's exponential decay, a is greater than 0, but less than 1. Making predictions about the effects of a and c. So hopefully in the last couple, uh, you've learned how to take notes while watching these videos. You should be taking notes, hitting pause frequently. If I'm doing a problem, you should try to do it on your own. Then see if uh, how you approached it matched up with mine. If you have nowhere to start, meaning you don't uh, have a place to start, don't know where to start, then of course you're going to just pay attention uh, and then hopefully apply it in practice. So here, when I'm going to graph things, I'm going to pose questions. What do you think this is going to do? And you're going to try to predict what's going to happen with our function. This goes back to our discussion about transformations. And then we'll see. You can hit pause and wait. Try to sort out what you think. Don't make just by the hip and go, oh, I think it's this and it's a guess. Try to make sure you understand why and then hit play again. So uh, when A is greater than 1, what does it look like? When that, we already know those answers, but we can see how we go when we look at particular problems. The graphs of exponential functions. So let's talk about the domain and range. So let's just put in a basic exponential function here. Y equals, equals 7 to the X. So there's an exponential function. So what do you think the domain is? If I keep going to the right, this keeps going up, right? So let's zoom out, and you'll see that it keeps going up. But it's very, very slowly going to the right, very, very slowly. You're not going to see it with this particular uh, version, let's say 2. That's still not because of the scale that I have on here, right? See, if we, if we look in here, you can see that I am going to the right. Even if I'm going over very, very slowly, I'm still going to the right. As I go to the right for x, this keeps, keeps going up. It's easy to think that there's an asymptote, especially when we look at it this way, that it gets to a certain point and can't go to the right any further. It will. It will keep going to the right. So my domain, my domain is actually... in interval notation, negative infinity, as you can see, I go forever in that direction to the left, comma, to infinity. And my range, remember the range is my y values, or the range are my y values. The range, range is, so it's a singular thing. Um, notice how my exponential function does not go below the x-axis. It keeps getting closer and closer to the x-axis as I move to the left, but it will never get to the x-axis. And it skyrockets and goes to infinity in positive y direction. So it goes from 0 to infinity. And notice that it doesn't include the 0 of y equals 0. It doesn't include the x-axis. So in other words, there are no negative values down here. So an exponential function, without having transformed it, is never going to output negative values. OK? So domain and range, we talked about that. Effect of the base a. So Notice how I'm going to put an A in here now, and we're going to create a slider. By the way, you could do all of this on your own if you tried. And we're going to make A greater than 0. Actually, we're going to make it greater than 0 .0000001. I'm going to try to get really close to 0, mostly because of this equal sign. I don't ever want it to be equal to 0. You'll see what happens when I show you the next thing. And let's go up to, but not including 1. So I'm going to go 0.999999999, OK? And I'm going to go step 0 0.01, OK? So right now, it's displaying x equals 1. 
I'm sorry, not x equals 1, a equals 1. And this is, this is that first part of the discussion. The reason why our function cannot equal, cannot consist of an a equaling 1 is not because we can't do it. Clearly, we can do it. We're allowed to. It's right there. But um, it is of no interest, and it doesn't behave like an exponential function. Why? Because it behaves like a line. No matter what value I put in for x, let's say I put a 1 in for x, 1 to the 1 is 1. If I put 2 in for x, 1 to the 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. If I put 17 in for x, 1 multiplied 17 times is going to still be 1. So no matter what value I put in there, 15, 14.95, I still get 1. So it doesn't matter. It ends up acting like a line y equals 1. Okay. So that's why a equals 1 is not allowed for an exponential function, not because it's not allowed so much. It's because it's not an exponential function. It, it is a line. It is the line y equals 1. So that's why we don't particularly allow it. Now, when I have a, a base, a factor that's less than 1, recall that that's exponential decay. Now, this one's decaying very, very slowly because I'm maintaining most of my original value. But as I get closer to 0, it looks more like your traditional exponential decay. And when I get closer and closer to 0, it's this drops precipitously very, very quickly and drops down to 0 before I even get to 1, really close to 0 before I even get to the value of 1. And as I go this way, it gets closer and closer to that y equals 1, right? I'm going to show you a better graph here y equals b to the x. So this is a different function. It has the same x values, of course, but I have a different slider. Now this slider is going to actually go from 0 to, let's say, 5. And let's go step point 5. Okay. And so we're going to see what happens. Right now it's, it's graphing b is equal to 1. And again, we have that line. So when I'm less than 1, that's this way, right? Let's go step point 1 because there's only two steps down there if I do it that way. So if I notice how I'm here and I'm below 1, right? My base is less than 1, so I get this exponential decay, right? Correct? Now, when I get to 1, it's going to be flat. Let's go all the way down to 0. When I get to 0, we get this thing, which doesn't make any sense uh, in, in that regard because... If I put any value in for x, it's equal to 0. 0 to the 17th is 0. 0 to the 1 is 0, right? And 0 to the 0 is 0. But you can't put negative numbers in there because 1 over 0, it's undefined. So that's of no interest. It doesn't behave like an exponential function. That's why we cannot have a base equal to 0 and, and it be an exponential function. But as I increase up here, 0.1, I get exponential decay. Now note... As I increase the base from 0.1 all the way up to whatever I want, I'm going to go to 5. Notice what happens to the curve, and maybe this will help you remember the nature of the values. It's how I think of it. Right now, I'm really close. The curve goes really close to the y-axis on the left, and I have exponential decay. As I increase the base to 0.2, it moves further away from the y-axis, and it decreases more slowly. It's moving towards y equals 1. It's going to become that line. And then once it becomes that line, right? So notice how the left side is flattening out. The side left of the y-axis is flattening out. And then I get to y equals 1. But watch what happens when I go over. My right side starts curling up. Okay? The right side starts curling up. And as I increase the base up to 5, because that's what I had set this to, it gets closer to the y-axis. So as I move away from 5 and decrease, it goes towards a, b equals 1, the base equaling 1. Once it equals 1, it flattens out and becomes want the line y equals 1, and then it curls up again until I get to 0 or close to 0. Again, if I'm increasing from 0, I'm going to get to a point where it's the line, and then I'm going to curl up the right-hand side. This is how you can make, keep track and make sense of what's happening with our curve, okay? When I'm just changing the base. I'm doing nothing else but changing the base. And that's what this section has talking about, the effect of the base. 
So the effect of the base, uh, if it's greater than one, we have exponential growth. If it's between zero and negative one, yeah, it's all crinkly here. Zero and negative one, we have exponential decay. And here are the book's graphs. These are all exponential growth. Notice the base is 1.3 greater than one, 1.2 greater than one, 1.4 greater than one. And as we increase, we get closer to the y-axis. Why? Because it's growing faster. It's growing faster on this side of the y-axis. If it's exponential decay, we are, when the base is 0.5, that's this one, it's in the middle. When the base is 0.7, that's greater, it's decreasing more slowly. It's because I'm maintaining 70%. So when I take a number and multiply it times 0.7, I'm going to keep 70% of it. I'm reducing it by 30%. So in other words, if I take, if this was the number one, I'm keeping 100% of that. If that was the number 0.9, I'm going to keep 90% of that number because I'm multiplying it times 0.9. So that's how I think of the this exponential function. So if this is 0.9, I'm going to keep more of that value and I'm going to decline more slowly. So I get this. Notice how if I took an average rate of change between these two points, the slope would be, would be less than if I took an average rate of change from here to here. Notice the slope would be fairly uh, steep in comparison. So as I decrease my base from 0.7 to 0.5, and then uh, they have this one here, it's 0.3, then um, my curves uh, exist as, as you're seeing it there, okay? Sorry, that was poorly put, but exponential decay. The initial value of C. So really what that initial value C is, is it's acting like a starting value. It's acting as, for instance, this 1000 is my starting value here on the y-axis. It's equivalent to the y-intercept. Notice how all of these have 100, 100, and 100, and so they're at 100. Over here in the graph, notice how there is no starting value, or you can think of the starting value as one, right? One times, okay? Oops. One times. And so it's going through the point zero comma one. By the way, if you don't transform anything, if you don't have a starting value, all exponential functions will go through zero comma one. Notice how all of these with these bases, they go through zero comma one, right? So that's because the starting value you can assume is 1. If I have a starting value of, let's say, 7, so y equals 7 times 16 to the x, my graph goes through 7, 0, 7. And it's exponential growth, but it goes through that point, and it's uh, growing... I don't know, really, really quickly, because seven is way, way steeper than uh, whatever these are, 2.3 and 0.77, right? That one's not growing at all, okay? And so that's, that's the initial value of C. And here they're talking about the same thing. If I started out with, I think that number was 100. No, that can't be 100. So this one's 50. Oh yeah, it's 50, starts there, 100 starts there. 250, it starts here. Uh, yes, there's a tear in the page. The scanner ate it. So here's our ver first example problem, matching the graphs and equations. So we're gonna match each of these graphs with these things. So notice how these two have uh, initial value of five and these two have initial value of 1.5. So 1.5 is down here. So these two, A and B, are one of these two. And C and D up here, are one of these two. And also notice that these are both decay, and so up here where we intersect at a starting value of five, both of these equations are decay, and both of these decays are uh, both of these equations are growth, and so C and D belong to A and B, and A and B belong to C and D. Now which one's which? So remember, it's easier to sort this out. I think when when the base is higher, I'm going to experience faster growth. So C belongs to B, and D belongs to little a. Over here, recall that when my, my decay factor is closer to one, I'm gonna decay more slowly. 
So that's A, right? My average rate of change is less steep than the average rate of change on B. So A goes with D, B goes with a C, C goes with B, and D goes with A. So it's in reverse order. And let's check our answer. That's the bottom of the page, so I can just go on up here. A is the graph of, uh, they don't tell us the letters. So A is the graph of, should be D, right? B is the graph of C, that one. There's reasoning there. I already explained that, so you can read this and see if it matches up. It should, but there's another way to think about it, maybe. C goes with 1.53, so that's what I said, C, and then D goes with that one. So that's exactly what we had stated, or I had stated, that it's reverse order. Horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so recall from our images that we have a horizontal asymptote. As I said, we kept getting closer and closer to the x-axis, but never actually got there. Okay, so every exponential function is going to have a horizontal asymptote. If we don't do any transformations, any shifting, we can have this starting value. If we don't do any shifting, so x isn't plus or minus some number and there's no plus or minus y, or in other words, plus or minus at the end of the function, then your horizontal asymptote will be y equals zero, period. It's just gonna be y equals zero. And we can talk about end behavior as well. If um, I have exponential growth as x approaches negative infinity. I guess maybe I can write this out. So n behavior. As x approaches, this is for growth. As x approaches negative infinity. That means if I go to the left as far as I can possibly go, then y, or my function, is approaching zero. As x approaches positive infinity, y is approaching positive infinity. Now if I'm looking at exponential decay, as x, remember, the function looks the opposite, right? I'm way up here and decay is going down as I go to the right. So as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches infinity, and then as x approaches positive infinity, then y approaches zero. I get closer and closer to the x-axis, but I never get there. Oh my goodness, why does it keep doing that? I didn't tell it to do that, did I? I guess I am. Oh, I hit this down here. I don't know, I don't know. And so they go through all that information here. Here's another summary box. C tells where the graph crosses the y-axis. So you should probably copy this down. Why? Because as you write something, something is happening in your brain in terms of understanding and remembering, recall. So copy this box down. Some of it's repetitive from what I've stated. Maybe you've already written down, but it's a good thing. Okay? So hit pause and copy all that down.